All right, and welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you once again from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberators paradise. Uh, that website is Pasnia, P A Z N I A dot com, if you want to check out uh, everything that we're doing here, uh, you know, building this permanent autonomous zone network, this, this uh, network of passes. Uh, a self-sufficient network of passes, uh, where we don't even need the first realm anymore. So again, Paznia.com is the place to go uh, to check that out. Uh, today I have a uh, another article. Um, yesterday I posted a uh, tweet on my uh, you know, tweet. LUA Radio is uh, the the, uh, the account. I'm going to go shoot a follow, but um, every once in a while I'll post something on there that uh, you know I'm so particularly inspired to post something on there. And uh, it uh, not only did uh, that spark. Um, not only was uh, you know the tweet sparked, but uh, also um, was motivated to write an article this morning uh, based off of uh, based off of that. So this one is called uh, "Cerebral or Cognitive Counter Economics: uh, Attention is a Currency." Uh, what are you paying attention to? So um, yeah, today's episode I'll cover. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, read that for you. And uh, otherwise, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, please enjoy. Cerebral Cognitive Counter-Economics. Attention is a currency. What are you paying attention to? Traditionally speaking, agorism, or counter-economics, deals with the trading of black or gray market goods and services, despite the threats, lawfare, waged by the servile society, or those who falsely imagine themselves to be our rulers. Well, in a world where data is the new oil and unhelpful emotions, uh, i.e., fear, anxiety, worry, etc., feed the Babylon beast, it might be time to expand this philosophy and practice into the more non-material spheres. Enter cerebral cognitive counter-economics. The cerebellum is responsible for a lot in the body, from coordinating movement and maintaining homeostasis to thinking, reasoning emotions, and learning. Other areas of the cerebellum also relate to the senses of vision, hearing, and touch. That said, last year, in my very cerebral process of decompressing and disentangling from uh, the Servile Society and our now Church of Self Liberation, our nature sanctuary here at the Free Republic of Pasnia, I came to a really, really important realization as I was going through podcast after podcast, uh, fear mongering video after fear mongering video. Uh, this realization was twofold. First, if you only focus on what the false masters of Babylon tell you to, uh, news, you're a victim. Of, you're a victim of mind control, regardless of your position. Government indoctrination camps, as well as immersion within a society of, the, of its graduates, both do a really stellar job at putting an invisible prison around the human mind. Strict doctrines are laid down, and all of reality must be found within their manufactured bookends, lest you get ostracized, canceled, or potentially even worse fates. And that's not even to mention the, the, the rapidly changing doctrines, it seems. But anyway, back to it. These doctrines, and most oftentimes false belief systems, are then reinforced in news, Babylon Entertainment, uh, nowadays it's primarily Netflix, whose founder is the not-so-great nephew of Edward Bernays, uh, to where it's hard to even fathom anything outside of it, even for a freedom seeker. I can personally attest to this myself uh, until I dumped all of these toxic influences a couple years back, uh, and longer for news. From flicker rates to subconscious programming, all the way to outright propaganda, uh, just as one is interested in their health will detox their body, it's absolutely critical, absolutely critical, to purge these detrimental influences. Speaking more in economic terms, whether directly via the controlled outfits or indirectly filtered through your favorite alternative media personality, this mind control is logged in the form of attention, one of the most valuable forms of currency. In my experience, we tend to create or reinforce that which we give the most attention to. So if your attention is wholly focused on the happenings of the servile society by way of the script delivered to you by their news anchors, words have meaning, they're anchoring you to this manufactured reality, it's really hard to fathom creating anything new when you're focused on the old. This fear porn based culture does exactly what it's intended to do. Again, fostering severely unhelpful emotions. And emotions certainly play a role in imp impacting action. As a couple examples, much of modern society is currently paralyzed by fear. Uh, fear of losing their 9-to-5 employment, uh, not being invited to Thanksgiving unless they sacrifice their bodily autonomy, uh, or whatever. And if not paralyzed, taking irrational actions, such as the Great Toilet Paper Run of 2020, when more efficacious routes most definitely exist. That, and more importantly, influencing action contrary to one's soul or life purpose, their reason for even being here on this earth. This leads to the second realization. 
The more I bring my actions in line with my principles, the better I feel and the smoother life gets. Referring back to the current state of society, it's assumed that if John loses his 9-to-5 job, things will be really difficult for him. He may lose his house or fall on otherwise hard times, even if only temporarily. And that certainly could be the case. But in my personal experience, as well as case study after case study, these radical shifts in lifestyle over the past couple of years have benefited, have benefited a lot of folks and put them, in more, uh, put them more in line with their purpose. I'm not ignoring those who had trouble or were unable to adjust to these changes, uh, but what I am saying is that what existed before 2020 was totally unsustainable uh, to begin with and totally contrary to the goal of human freedom or empowerment. Uh, even with hardship, it's really, really for the best. Uh, to use a simplistic explanation, uh, if you're getting a new couch, the old one must be taken out to the trash. I spent the entire first 20-something years of my life uh, basically fighting myself in an effort to do what I thought I needed to do to survive. Uh, do the 9-to-5, even though it was terrible for my mental and physical health. Uh, a lot of alcohol was consumed, I will, I will assure you of that. Uh, and was supporting an institution of slavery that I disagreed with to my core. Uh, but I couldn't envision anything different, nor did I have any idea of how to get the life that I wanted. Uh, it wasn't until 2018 when I was somewhat forced uh, emotionally and spiritually to quit a job that I actually rather enjoyed doing, uh, an electrician's apprenticeship. Now, hurling myself into uncertainty and even worse, poverty, or even worse poverty, uh, as well as into a brand new city, Austin, Texas, uh, moving into the apartment of my previous founding podcast host, Kyle Reardon. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, it was fucking rough. Uh, the cost of living there was exorbitant, and especially so with the surge electrical prices uh, on account of the drastic need for summer air conditioning. Driving for Postmates was hardly worthwhile, and though I, am, uh, and though I had a work-from-home job for a short time, uh, it wasn't near enough to sustain me. Though I am extremely grateful I got to meet Kyle and live with him for a couple, you know, a short while. Regardless, uh, this journey of the soul then led me to Acapulco, Mexico for a couple of months, and uh, then here to the homestead, which I declared the Fear Above Gapaznia uh, just last year in 2020. And now I can safely say, 2018 was the last time I had and will ever have a Servile Society job. A Servile Society job being defined by me as employment wherein your time is not your own. You're at the behest of someone else, even though it is voluntary and for a paycheck. Since then, I've strived to live more in accordance with nature and its cycles, a near impossible feat when still entangled with Babylon. Basic necessities are all covered, and I never really have to worry about food, at least for the foreseeable future. I've learned about numerous paths towards energy independence, and am well on the way, uh, with the help of many other self-liberators, in building a self-sufficient network of permanent autonomous zones. As of this year, I have the most wonderful free mates, one who shares in my visions, uh, radical ones, like living on a sailboat sometime in the future. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all coming together. And uh, while it does require work, you know, sometimes hard work, um, it's seamless, uh, easy even, enjoyable. This is not to boast or self-aggrandize, but rather to provide an experience of an individual striving to bring all of their actions in alignment with their principles and the results thereof. However you want to look at it, the universe, the creator provides, and uh, especially and recognizably so, uh, if you're carrying out the divine will of natural law. To put it another way, all causes have their effects, and we as individuals are not immune from such corrections. But none of this would have ever been possible if I hadn't begun to disconnect and disentangle a number of years back when I stopped taking where I was giving my attention for granted. My list of possibilities would have only included those within my awareness at that time, and was it limited? And surely, my actions would have continued to bolster a system of coercion that's rotten to its satanic core. Just as we tend to create that which we give the most attention to, and just as in homeopathy, like heals and attracts like, our emotional state is a big determinant in what we experience in physical space and time. So in conclusion, I ask again, what are you paying attention to? And is it fruitful, a worthwhile investment, in bringing about the life or the world you would like to see? All right, guys, and there you have it. Uh, my newest piece, uh, Cerebral Cognitive Counter-Economics, Attention is a Currency. Uh, now the reason there's you know cerebral and cognitive, I put cerebral there initially, and then I thought of cognitive and thought that might be better, but um, I will leave that for you guys to decide. It's just kind of a, just a model, something that came to mind today, and I was inspired to write it. So um, yeah, if you have any any feedback, any thoughts, uh, always always please do, uh, please do let me know. Um, yeah, vonniepodcast.com. If you want to use the comment section, no one ever uses that. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, um, on float, um, you can find uh, you know Telegram, Pasnia chat, uh, t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. Uh, or, uh, you know, wherever. Certainly love to, to, to get your feedback. Um, but I thought this was a very, I thought this was an important piece to, uh, to put out. And it's certainly in line with, uh, with some of the stuff I've been thinking about recently and that I've been writing about recently. So 
Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, with that said, with that said, uh, as always, remember, uh, always remember, Vonda was yours for the making uh, and the second realm is yours for the building. Um, yeah, cheers, guys. Until next time. Do you ever feel like something is not quite right with the world? Brushfire is a thriller packed full of twists and turns, including life-changing chaos, a web of government secrets, decentralized freedom cells, and utilizing every tool possible to avoid detection, including cryptocurrencies, hacking techniques, secure encrypted messaging, and a strong security culture. Fighting against the seemingly never-ending threat of tyranny and injustice shows how liberty in our lifetime is possible, but only with direct action. Get your copy of Brushfire today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com.